Hello and welcome to the second episode of Cooking with Grandors, where each week we randomly select a country and cook their main dish. This week we're exploring the city-state of Singapore. Having been expelled from the country of Malaysia, Singapore was quick to adopt minimal trade barriers that cemented itself as a trade hub of Southeast Asia, leading to a melting pot influencing every aspect of its culture. The nature of their society has led to the development of popular street markets for the trade of all sorts of commodities, especially food. These open food markets are known as hawker markets and are where we are getting inspiration for today's dish, chow kue tio, a form of fried rice noodles with pork belly. Like the last episode, we're going to have the recipe down in the description so you can follow along if you so choose. To start off, we're going to give our chives a pretty rough chop, giving them about an inch of space or so to work with. It doesn't need to be fine. And you can see here we're giving them plenty of space to work with so that they can then go in the dish and really even out. And we're chopping up the vegetables first so that we don't lead to any cross-contamination. So definitely make sure to get your, your chives and your garlic chopped up first. Now onto the pork. I bought some pre-diced pork here, but it's still in chunks that are a little larger than I would like. So I went and chopped it up a bit more, and we're going to chop it against the grain into little slabs almost. Now this is about where we want to take a quick pause to throw the rice noodles into a bowl of warm water. And the recipe calls for about 10 to 15 minutes, but really it depends more on the type of rice noodles you buy. Usually on the packaging it'll say how long to soak them, but you want to be careful also not to soak them for too long, otherwise they'll break apart much easier. In our case we soaked them for far too short, and it was a different kind of bad. While the pan heats to medium high, you're going to want to pre-scramble your eggs. So here I'm cracking both my eggs into a bowl and just going to give them a quick whisk with a fork. So with sesame oil in our pan, we're going to just drop all of our pre-chopped pork in there. Ideally we want to use a wok, unfortunately ours was out of commission, so a, a large pan will do just fine. While that pork starts to brown, we're going to start making our sauce, which is going to be two tablespoons first of dark soy followed by one tablespoon of sweet soy, and then three tablespoons of oyster sauce, which can give you a little fight when getting it out of the bottle. And then following that up, you can do one to three tablespoons of chili garlic sauce, depending on how much spice you like. Now that we've all got that in a little bowl, we're gonna give it a quick mix with a fork, making sure to make a mess of our counters. After working on the sauce, we wanna make sure that we're still stirring our pork, ensuring that it's getting browned on all sides. At this stage though, we're getting a little bit too much fat. And here we're going to take all of that fat and deal with it. So we're going to scoop all the pork out into a separate bowl and then pour out all that fat and grease into a separate mini bowl and freeze it for use later on. So assuming that we timed it perfectly, it should be about the time for us to pour out our noodles into a strainer. And from there, we're just going to plop them back into that same bowl to transport them back to the stove where we are once again going to pour that pork back into the skillet or wok or whatever you have that still has some of that oil and grease in there. And then just plop the noodles down on top of there. And then this is also going to be the time that we're going to add our whopping six cloves of garlic through the mincer and try and mix that all together. And I found later on that for mixing, you really want to use tongs instead of that janky wooden spoon that I'm using. Now on the time it takes you to add enough garlic to clear out every vampire within a 20 mile radius, that should be enough time before you add in your two cups of bean sprouts, followed by the two cups or so of chopped chives that you chopped up earlier. Once you thoroughly get those mixed in with tongs, it's about time to add in two to three large eggs to scramble up. Now the name of the game here has really been to keep things moving, constantly mixing that up with those tongs, and even taking the pan on and off the heat in order to ensure nothing burns, especially those rice noodles. Now it's at about this stage that you're good to go to add in that sauce that we mixed earlier, just pouring it right on top and then once again keeping that moving with those tongs. This week for this drink section we're going to be making the Singapore cocktail called the Singapore Sling. Now we're going to get our bartending cup loaded up with some ice before filling it with one and a half ounces of gin using our little bartending cup there. It's going to be one of the top and we're going to follow that up with one ounce of Benedictine liqueur and then a half ounce of the cherry liqueur. 
Now I'm gonna give it a quick splash with the aromatic bitters and then follow that up with a quarter ounce of the simple syrup. We wanna put the lid on our shaking glass before giving it a nice good thorough shake. Sometimes a rag helps to prevent getting your hands too cold. Here we're adding two ounces of club soda, which was a debatable choice. And as you'll see later, it didn't turn out too great. All right, we're squeezing in one ounce of lemon juice or half a lemon, however you choose to do it. And then we're just gonna pour our chilled mixture over that. And then finally, we wanna garnish it with one maraschino cherry and a lemon wedge. Overall, the drink looks really pretty, but uh, let's listen in to see how it tastes. Mine's sweeter. Let me try yours. Does this need to be in the refrigerator? Oh! Mine is disgusting. Club soda ruins it. Don't do the club soda. So yeah, the club soda was a terrible addition, but it's not exactly my kind of thing anyway. So really, if you're a club soda fan, try it out. Otherwise, if you're unsure, definitely avoid it. It's not worth it. It's really nasty. Now we can finally plate up our noodles just scooping them into our bowl of preference using those tongs making sure to get a little bit of everything in there and honestly this meal was really good the, the sauce was flavorful I liked the pork although I would probably trim off a little bit more of the fat in the future but that's personal preference um, and I would definitely try the noodles again um, definitely needed more soaking time than what we gave them and I would also go for a thicker noodle, which is much closer to the traditional nature of this dish. Although, like I said, everything was there, the flavor was there, all the proper ingredients to make this a really good dish, and I totally suggest everyone try it. Now, we've made some changes to the channel. I wanted to thank everyone who watched us last week. We got over 100 views, which I'm beyond thankful for. Uh, we're gonna have a email that's going to be down in the description as well as all the recipes you saw here today. Um, if you decide to try any of our recipes out, please comment or send us an email with the picture and we'd love to feature you in a future episode. I want to once again say thank you so much for watching and I can't wait to see you all next Friday when we upload our video for St. Lucia.